So guys, today we're going to be doing another installment of the Mora Garber versus the world and since you guys now know I got the tops to home a field knife I'm going to be starting to pit the Mora Garber up against a few larger knives and the first one I'm going to be pitting it up against the first larger knife is one of the most quintessential outdoors knives it's really the outdoor knife that started all other outdoor knives and that knife is the K-Bar USMC fighting and utility knife and we're going to be putting it up against this knife in the standard Mora Garber versus the world tests and we'll be starting off with batoning then going into fire and then going into notching so let's get this started okay guys so as I as I mentioned we are going to be first doing uh, batoning and of course as always the competitor always starts first so we are going to be doing the k-bar we I did because this is going to be uh, you know a larger knife that's able to span more I did up the size of the wood as you guys can tell with the other ones I was using a little bit smaller piece of wood because the knives overall were smaller but I'm gonna be upping the size of the wood for these larger okay, knives. Guys, so I backed up quite a bit and hopefully you guys can still see we'll this. Be able to see the top of this baton but trust me it is starting up top and so like I said this is the or this is the k-bar Now, despite what a lot of people actually uh, think about the K-Bar being a weak knife, I've actually always found that the K-Bar seems to be a really good batoner. About the only thing I dislike about it is, of course, because of its style and design, uh, it's, it doesn't really translate shock very well, so it's a very stiff batoning knife. disclosure I think I got hung up on the knot some of this wood I've been batoning lately has had a lot of knots in it but I'm going to start on another side of this piece of wood that I don't think has as much knot on it and so I'm going to try this here guys go once again it went through it very easy about the only complaint I really have with the uh, K bar and baton ability is the paint coating on them is pretty weak so if you guys ever get a close-up and I'll probably do a close-up on this thing but the paint tends to wear off of them pretty fast okay guys so now on to the Mora Garber so once again I'm not be batoning as large a chunk of wood with the Garber primarily because they just can't span it So as you guys can definitely tell, the more Garber, especially in comparison to the K-Bar, is struggling, but it's still muscling its way through this piece of wood. I think it will end up splitting it. Uh, one of the big things you can notice here is because, once again, it's so much smaller in edge, you have to constantly keep a batonable amount of steel on the other side of your batoned piece. So there you guys go. Very good job by the Garber. I did break through one of the knots uh, pretty well actually. I'm pretty impressed about that. But for the most part you just have to understand that you're batoning through a smaller or you know that you can only baton smaller pieces of wood and that it's a little bit harder especially in comparison to the something like the K-Bar that's so much easier to baton with because it has a much longer blade. Right, so span. now on to feather sticking. So this one's always going to be a fun one. 
uh, the K bar I think is actually going to do pretty well. Once again, a lot of people give the K bar a bad rap because it's so big, but it's actually a quite capable knife. Now I am going to quickly kind of hand baton a smaller chunk here. So I can See there, it's actually not too bad at feather sticking. I will say the grind on this knife is very robust and industrial. So what I mean by this is when you do stuff like this, um, you know, it, it's really hard to get it to feather stick. Like whereas with the Garberg, it really wants to feather stick. Whereas this one, you have to, uh, you know, force it kind of into that roll. But it will still feather stick pretty well. Um, the other thing I kind of dislike about the K-Bar, and this is actually a pretty easy fix, and I've thought about doing this before, but this back knife guard, knife, knife guard, guard here, here, is, so it angles a lot steeper than the front one, and so when you put your hand up here, the flesh, or this little area, web area of your thumb, so like this area right here, uh, it gets really stabbed into, so that's really a disadvantage when doing finer task skills, but you could actually quite easily cut that off with like a hacksaw, and then just use some sandpaper but try and test these knives in their more stock condition so that you guys know because once again I haven't modified the Garberg either so it'd be unfair to modify the case okay, so now going over to the Garberg so of course as we know and have quite a bit of experience showing with this uh, the Garberg does a very capable and very competent job of feathering wood uh, I kind of had to plane some of this down here I'm gonna take that off One of the biggest notes I'll note with uh, the Garberg, and these were a little bit thicker and bigger uh, feathers, and probably not the best by like Morris Kohansky's rules, but one of the big things that I'll notice, or that I notice primarily with this knife, is that and unlike the K-Bar, it actually really wants to sink into the wood. It really wants to cut the wood. So that's one of the big things I notice in difference. And, you know, that's primarily due to the grind, the Scandi grind. It just loves to dig into wood. And now let's go into fire. So fire, once again, is pretty much where I have some aspen inner bark here. And I try and use aspen inner bark to give a knife any chance. So this is essentially using the best odds. Could you get a fire going with a ferro rod? You know, using a ferro rod and this very fine material here, could you get a fire going? So this is really giving it the best chances. However, and this is something that I'm finding really interesting about this test. And if you guys have been noticing, I've been trying to pit knives, you know, like the quintessential knives of bushcraft and outdoors, camping, survival, whatever you want to call it. I've been trying to pit the quintessential knives, the ones that are true, truly legendary. And it's something that I repeatedly notice with most of them is just the striking inability to actually strike a ferro rod. If you guys notice here... And once again, you can, as with the Mora Companion, you can always modify this uh, tang on the Gar, or not the Garberg, but the K-Bar to give it a 90 degree angle for striking. So I don't want to say that you could never do anything, but out of box, you guys can see that, you know, this thing just really, you know, just won't even strike the ferro rod. So now that one's pretty much disqualified from that race. And so hands down victory to that Garberg, which... Which actually doesn't want to start a fire today, but I do promise you guys it would start pretty a fire. Much the Garberg, as you guys can see, hopefully here are a few strikes. Oh, that one almost caught. Dang, doesn't want to start fire either. <laughs> but given very good conditions, the, uh, there we go, something? Nope. <laughs> So there we go. Given good conditions, the Garberg, of course, being designed for fire, it excels. So once again, another really good victory for this one. 
and of course I didn't actually want this to burn all the way so in case anyone's wondering I did not design that to burn all the way because I actually want to keep some of that for more personal use so anyways the k-bar won't even strike a ferro rod whereas the Garberg will strike a ferro rod and strike a ferro rod well enough out of box to start a fire so once again the fire victory goes to the Garberg Okay guys, so now on to notching and just overall uh, woodworking. And so as you guys could see there, that was a pretty interesting test and once again, this is always in stock condition. Now, while I'm notching here, at least in the beginning, I think I'm gonna speed up some of this and just roll in a lot of like what it's after because a lot of you guys, especially who've been around for this series, you know, already kind of know the uh, whole thing. But anyways, I did want to address a quick question and that was that I got uh, I think the last Mora versus the World I did, and that was that one guy was commenting and saying that I'm pretty much setting up the Garberg for a victory because I'm doing the tests that we all know the Mora Garberg is great at. And in fairness, not everyone knows that the Mora might be good for these tasks, but I just want to address the fact that with these tests in the Mora versus the World, I'm not necessarily setting up the Mora ver or the Mora Garberg to win every test. And the reason why I do these three standardized tests is because while there are other aspects to knife use, and I do use my knives for other things such as food and material, natural material processing, these are the three big things, or around the four big things, that we as knife users in the woods do with our knives. I mean, my big thing is, you know, with all of these tests, I mean, do you not go out into the woods and do one of these four things pretty much every time you go out? Because my big thing is, I don't always do material, natural material processing, and I don't always do food processing when I'm out in the woods, but I can pretty much guarantee you every single time, I'm out in the woods, I do one of these four primary things, whether it's feather sticking to start a fire, whether it's fire crafting, whether it's, uh, you know, just doing some carving. These are things that I commonly do out in the woods. And so my answer to that primary question is that I don't think I'm really pitting the Garberg up as much as the Garberg when Mora made it. They were like, you know, this, these are the primary things woodsmen do out in the woods. So let's make a knife that's really, really, really good at these things. I don't think I'm necessarily making a video that's necessarily a highlight of all the good things about the Mora Garber, but rather Mora sat down and thought about what are the primary thing woodsmen are doing with a belt knife. And they're like, it's likely fire starting, notching or, you know, carving. It's likely, you know, feather sticking. It's these types of things that they're doing or they're batoning, you know. These are the types of things that woodsmen are doing with their knives. So they wanted to make a knife that woodsmen, you know, when they do these types of tasks, such as, you know, feather sticking, fire craft, you know, they could make a knife that actually works really well. So to respond to that question, and I know this is a question that sometimes people are asking a lot in their mind, like, you know, is he just doing this to help? Once again, I just want to address the it. fact that with this Mora versus the world, I'm not necessarily making this as like a straight ad for the Garberg or why you need to go out and buy a Garberg because it can do all of this and it beats all these knives. The primary reason I'm doing the more Garberg versus the world is because honestly, I have all these knives like the Topps Fieldcraft, the K-Bar, you know, and I have all these different knives that, you know, are reputed essentially legends in the outdoor knife arena. And, you know, how do they stack up or how, how does this newcomer, this Mora Garberg thing, you know, because it's very unknown knife, it's new, we don't really know much about it. So how does it stack up against all these legends of the bushcrafting knife world? And so that's essentially the real premise to the Mora versus the world. It wasn't necessarily to make a series of ads, essentially, like people think, you know, of me just repping this Mora Garberg. And so that was not the intentions of this, uh, you know, video series, but it was really just to see how good is this Mora Garberg thing versus all what is already out there. Because why go get a Mora Garberg? if my, you know, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is just as good, or if this K-Bar is just as good as a Garber, you know? So, 
essentially a semi rant over there that is the real premise to this uh, video series and hopefully you guys can see that and that essentially like I was saying the more Garberg isn't just I'm not just picking out these types of tests because I know the Garberg's good at them it's that these are the most common tasks that woodsmen today go out and do with their knives and so like I said there are more specialty tasks such as food processing material processing and things like chopping as well like going and chopping down a tree with a knife but obviously the Garberg's not a chopper it wasn't even marketed as a chopper and secondly with a belt knife I probably wouldn't be really processing you know resources with it if you do that great but you know th those aren't the common man uses for the Garberg or a belt knife so that's why I selected these four three to four tests essentially for the Garberg so anyways guys hopefully that clears that up and uh, that can make this this kind of dull process of carving on things just a little bit more entertaining because I just wanted to take time to answer that question that I got you know uh, about the more versus the world tests and series as a whole so anyways guys, hopefully that cleared that up and uh, if it did definitely leave that uh, like leave that uh, note in the comment section below if that cleared up anything or if you were wondering that and yeah, hopefully that was able to answer that question. Uh, so anyways guys, without further ado, let's get over to the Garberg. Okay, so now to the Garberg for notching. So of course we know a lot about the Garberg. <laughs> it does it pretty well. And uh, yeah, so this should be expected to go pretty fast. Guys, so there is, or one moment, let me just make sure here. Okay, yeah, so this is the Mora Garberg's notches, as you guys can see there. Done very fast, very quick. With the K bar, it took a little bit longer, but that's kind of understandable because when you have something that's, you know, about, you know, one third more uh, than the K or the Garberg, it takes a little bit more. In addition, the grind. On the k-bar is just not as good and sorry if you guys notice any blood i don't know how i nicked myself but somehow one of these knives must have nicked me but it's nothing too big uh, but anyway so this is the k-bar side it did everything just as a k-bar should and one thing i do want to clarify i get a lot of like when i read comments on amazon and stuff people just bash on the k-bar so much and like oh it sucks oh it's a terrible knife oh it has a rat tail tang so the first time you hit a piece of wood with it just gonna explode like this knife is actually really good guys so keep in mind I mean it's not as good as a modern design but keep in mind that this design here this overall design though this is a newer one you know this overall design is decades old if not over 50 years old so this is a very old design and keep in mind another thing this wasn't designed with the intent the straight intent of being a survival knife it has combat utility in its name so it's designed to be a combat slash utility knife so this thing also has to be anticipated for some type of combat use that was at least how it was designed so for me I always think it performs very well other than the fact of the no fire starting thing but I think it performs pretty well obviously it doesn't perform quite as well as a dedicated outdoors knife and I'm not overall that surprised that the Mora Garberg in these particular tasks excelled just for the fact that you know this is more purpose driven it's a brand new design like a year old design it was designed by bushcrafters for bushcrafters it's a very good knife but 
side. I just wanted to quickly note that the K-Bar, it just gets so much flack and so much garbage from people who don't really know what they're talking about. Like, no offense to some people, but anyone that calls the K-Bar trash honestly has never used a K-Bar. So they're just, they're just picking up on what other people who also have never used K-Bars or maybe got like a lemon K-Bar that, you know, just happened to break on them, which happens, you know, they're picking up on other people's words. They've never actually used one. And I've shown consistently, not only in its own review, but also in this video, that the K-Bar is actually a pretty capable knife, especially with respects to its size. Because once again, this knife, not only does it have a little bit of a different purpose than the K-Bar, but it's also, or the Garberg, but it's also bigger. Like you guys can see here, this is like butt to butt here. You can see that this edge and this overall size longer. Actually, the handle is actually dead on. The actual handle grip size is the exact same, but the hand or the blade is, you know, definitely larger. So obviously, when it comes to a larger knife, the fine tasks are not going to be able to be completed as nice. However, the advantage essentially for batoning, I give the advantage straight to the K-Bar. The K-Bar is so much easier to baton with. And I rem I'm reminded, especially when picking out a little bit of a larger piece of wood that the k-bar is so much nicer at times and once again this whole garbage about it being a rat tail tang both of these knives if you consider a rat tail tang whatever that means both of these knives are technically that rat tail tang garbage that people like to throw around uh, so you know both of them have around the same type of tang this one is a little bit thinner but still same principle this one is better to baton with this one is better in my opinion Opinion. I felt like this one won hands down on the fire and is a bit better with crafting. Once again, looking at the K-Bar's notches, you can notch with the K-Bar. It is harder. I would say the primary reason it's harder too is not necessarily just because it's larger, but also because the grind on this is not as set up for cutting into wood. It's set up as to be more of a general purpose do-all kind of grind. And so once again, I think that in its own philosophy falls in quite nicely, but K or the Garberg still beats it in firecraft and uh, fine carving. As far as feather sticking goes, I would also say the Garberg definitely beats it because the, once again, the grind, it naturally wants to dig into wood. I found it a lot easier to feather stick with this, whereas you can feather stick with this knife here, or the K-Bar. You just have to be really purposeful about it. You have to know what you're trying to do and really dig the knife in. Like You have to hold the knife at an angle that it will dig into the wood. But if you do that, you can get effective um, feathers with this knife. Hopefully you guys enjoy that really loud aircraft. That dude, I don't know what he did to his aircraft, but that is obnoxiously loud. That's a tiny little aircraft. Anyways, whatever that modification is, his aircraft is insanely loud. Anyways, so that's pretty much my thoughts on the Mora Garberg versus the World versus the K-Bar Combat Utility Knife. Once again, the Garberg is really showing itself to be a superb knife in the outdoor industry. And I think I agree with many people about the only improvement you could really make to this Garberg, in my opinion, is making it high carbon steel. I do want to quickly note, this is a 1095 Crovan or Chromium Vanadium steel. So this will rust before this however this is coated so it's less prone to actual real life rust just for the fact that it has that coating however if you were to strip the coating off of both of these knives this one doesn't have one but if you were to do it with this it would rust easier but the edge retention will be better on this knife and this will be harder to put an edge back on because it is a Sandvik I believe it's 14 C28N Sandvik on this one so it's more rust resistant but you know it will lose its edge faster and will be slightly harder to sharpen anyways guys that has been it for this part of more versus the world don't forget to comment like definitely share and if you haven't already subscribe that's it for now I'm out